This program is about the end of an era in Austin, Texas. Probably seen the better part of this era past. I think we're in the same era, but we just have a, a ma major shift in uh, real estate. It's amazing how fast they can knock these buildings down once they get going. The era of the, the small guy in this, in this part of town is, is pretty much seen its day. All the affordable, acceptable workspaces are disappearing under the bulldozer blades, and none of these developers are building new, affordable studio spaces, right? The first obvious symbol of the new era was an innocent sign notifying all the residents of the block bound by 15th, 16th, Lavaca, and Guadalupe streets that someone with some big bucks had big plans to change the landscape. It's going to be very, a lot of money, and uh, I understand they're going to have airplane lighting right out here behind us and all that. Yeah, helicopters, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. But... Uh, that's that's for them to figure out. That's that's not my cup of tea. I, I feel bad about being displaced by all those people coming here, right? And and it makes me wonder what's going to happen in the future. Uh, uh, I just don't know what to think. Although everyone had to face the same developers, it was the artists of Shownuff Studios, right above Jack Brown Cleaners who were concerned that the world that was their studio might be lost forever, and brought in videographers to document as much as possible the art, the artists, and the life that had been the end of an era. but I still love the Congo. Getting 
Greetings, Greetings from, from Timbuk3 and, and the, the Killer Bees. Awesome music. You, you make them live. Well, get your scorecards ready. We're going to be talking about the cable company, uh, the city management, and public access. If the city did what they claimed they were going to do and what they should do, uh, yes, they could save anywhere from uh, one to two million dollars a year. And, and over and over, I've gone to city council and said, why don't you do this? And they've ignored it all. And during the budget fight, particularly I brought it to their attention again, and they ignored it, and they're not gonna do anything about it. The company has written letters and has run advertisements saying that it has a hundred and a hundred and thirty-five million dollars invested in the system here. The judge in the uh, modifications hearing uh, developed some numbers that showed that the value, market value of the system was a hundred and ninety-two million dollars, and yet, the company claims and has gotten a very uh, willing appraisal district to put them on the tax roll for $29 million. I'll have to say for, in defense of the cable company that it's simply doing what all the others are doing, Southern Union, AT&T, Southwestern Bell, Valero, all these big companies are doing this because the taxing jurisdiction out there is just weak. Had the cable company been paying its fair share of taxes over the last six years, that they would, have, well, they would owe the school district and the city $6 million in back taxes. What we have is an unregulated monopoly that Congress has permitted. Cable companies really want it both ways. What they want is to not have any competitors and have the cities protect their monopoly rights to have no competitors, and yet let them do what they want to do, give the kind of service they want to give at the prices they want to give it. City management has either deliberately or through gross incompetence failed to provide this central studio. Uh, I, I don't want to tell you the sordid, uh, miserable history of our attempt to get a central studio in this city, but it's not the cable company's fault. I lay it squarely at the gate of city management. We're going to have a comprehensive and very realistic view of what is happening with the cable company, the city management, and ACTV tonight on Alternative Views. <laughs> Another pitch. Can I want to try that? 
Auditorio, Mexicarte presenta Arte para Todos, un programa que promueve el encuentro cultural. Ladies and gentlemen, Mexicarte presents Arts for Everyone, a program which promotes the arts and culture. Bienvenidos a Arte para Todos. Welcome to Art for Everyone. Austin, in its short history in the arts, has protected small conservative circles that promote the collections of the rich. These projects do not reflect the actual or present needs of today's artists that live day after day in developed cities. Artists today encounter new challenges and new horizons in their artistic concepts. Contemporary times have given way to postmodernism, where trends of the vanguard no longer limit the visual artist to experiment with their senses. This gives origin to experimentation with different materials, tools, techniques, and concepts, and even the body itself as a form of expression. Content is fundamental. In 1987, Mexicarte created the first experimental salon in Austin. This took place at St. Edward's University and included a performance art series. Experimental Salon features non-traditional media, including performances, video art, Xerox, neon, conceptual work, installations, and mail art. This work is called experimental because new or modern techniques are used. In performance art, instead of painting or drawing, the artist acts out the idea, combining dance or movements, sound, and visual effects. I'm Susan Lubin, hostess of The Junior League Presents, a weekly series that highlights nonprofit organizations in Austin. Let's take a look at some of the organizations that our show will feature. Going to the hospital can be a frightening experience for children and their parents, but it's a lot less scary when everyone is well prepared. That's why Skippy the Kangaroo lives at the Children's Hospital of Austin at Brackenridge. I believe they came to identify with Lady Macbeth, not Lady Macbeth the murderess, but Lady Macbeth the misunderstood woman. She in fact wrote one of her friends that all of the grief and despair which she had felt while she was in Texas, she had poured into the piece. The most important thing for me in hospice care is that we enhance the quality of a patient's life, and I do think we make a difference in that life. We really focus on um, the person and the family and, and meeting their own needs, helping them meet their own needs. There were all, there were all these people coming in to see her and talk to her, and um, she loved it. You know, it was, it was special for her because she knew she was special, and uh, they, um, you know, she knew she was getting good care. Tune in on Thursdays at 2 p.m., Fridays at 7 p.m., 
and Sunday evenings at 11 p.m. for the Junior League Presents on Austin Access Channel 10. Joining us now are Millie Cook, a volunteer with the West Austin Caregivers, and Alan Bell Johnson, a client of the Caregivers. Millie has been with the Caregivers since its early days and is a faithful visitor and a frequent driver who goes way beyond the call of duty. Alan Bell is a very special, delightful, spunky little lady who is only 98 years old. She lives in the Village Christian Apartments where she had to get someone to take her place there delivering meals so that she could be with us today. She also plays in the kitchen band in her apartments. Ladies, thank you for joining us today. Alan Bell, what services do you receive from the West Austin Caregivers? Well, I uh, call, have, have called them when I need to go to the doctor, mostly. I don't think I have called them for any other purpose than going to the doctor. Millie, how did you become involved with the Caregivers? Well, of course, Kathy Backus, who founded it, was a member of our church, and she encouraged me. Since 1895, Hyde Park has been a lighthouse of the gospel in the hill country of Central Texas. It's a Bible-believing church seeking to share the message of God's love with our city, the nation, and the world. And it changed my outlook on mankind. I don't worry not anymore about folk. And you know what? That freed me up. Yes, sir. I can be free anywhere now. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. I can be free because I'm free. Yes, yes, yes. For he said that if he sets you free, free then you're free indeed. Amen. Hello, church. Yeah. This is a revival service. Yeah. Hello. And I'm glad about it. Didn't it this is the day that the Lord has made. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Welcome to The Gardeners, Christian dramas presented by Intheo Ministries. Deja vu, past lives, astral projection, clairvoyance. Good evening. Welcome to the Network of Light. I'm your host, Heather Glencross, a local uh, Austin psychic, and we have a metaphysical talk show, and sometimes we go into uh, uh, areas that are a bit beyond. If you really want to be happy in Texas in 1988, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. See you next time. It's time for Kids TV Express! Clock set. Set your first shot. Set. Stand by for color bars and tone. Ready. Roll tape. Tape's rolling. Hit color bars and tone. Ready. Stand by to kill bars and tone. Stand by the talent. Ready. Stand by for countdown. Ready. Quiet in the set. Quiet. Hit countdown. Ten. I'm Mario, and Kids TV Express is the great way to look through the world of television. Sage, did you know that Valentine's was not always considered a romantic holiday? Yes, I think the historians thought that it began as a religious holiday, and that the martyrs would sacrifice their lives for the church. This is a red, violets are blue. I love Axis, and I hope you do too. Roses are red, and violets are blue. We're on Channel 10, so watch us, won't you? Roses are red. Cats are great. We want to say Happy Valentine's Day. Point of View is a monthly public affairs presentation of the Texas Commission for the Blind. 
This program is intended as public information and education about blindness, visual disability, and the role of the Commission. Hello everyone and welcome to this month's edition of Point of View. What is Austin Resource Center for Independent Living? The Austin Resource Center for Independent Living is a center where persons with disabilities gain knowledge and information about how to go on with their life after or with a disability. And also we do a lot of outreach and uh, education of the public on what it does it mean and what doesn't it mean to have a disability. What is independent living all about? Well, independent living as a concept is the empowerment of somebody with a disability to take charge of their own life. With us this morning in this segment of the program are three guests from three organizations, each with their own unique acronym, and more importantly, each involved integrally with services to disabled citizens. And basically, CTD is a disability rights organization. We started from the philosophy that disabled people have civil rights and that disabled people should be the ones to advocate for them. So CTD works to try to organize disabled people to start advocating for their own civil rights. And Randy, we move on to ACB. We're primarily interested in the Texas affiliate known as the American Council of the Blind of Texas, an organization of blind and visually impaired individuals with the primary purpose of making improvements in uh, conditions and the opportunities for visually impaired and blind individuals in the state. What we do is help people who are having problems or have concerns about services that they're receiving from either Texas Commission for the Blind, Texas Rehab Commission, or the five independent living centers. خوشحال شما بگذار این بار گلاب پاش رو دوباره از آب ابرهای بهار پر کرد و از پنجره اتاقش به کوه و دشت پاچی و هر جا که بنفشه و لاله و نرگس و سنبل می روید همه جا را با آب بهاری آبیاری کرد بچه های خوبم به این ترتیب اولین نم نم باران بهاری بعد از برف زمستانی به زمین بارید و مردم خوشحال شدند که بهار آمده هوا خوب و سبک شده بود و نسیم ملایم بهاری عطر شکوفه ها را به هر طرف می برد For about a year now, American Atheists has 
been warning everyone in every direction that Pat Robertson was going to, quote, go for it uh, with a, uh, a try uh, for the candidate of the presidency of the United States for the Republican Party. And actually, nobody would accept that. Every time that we turned around and we said this in any kind of our publications, uh, there were loud guffaws saying there is no way that this man is going to be seriously considered as a candidate. And uh, there was a constant reading off of him. And we thought this was extremely dangerous. We feel that the man has much more of a chance than anybody thinks that he has, and that he is an adroit um, politician, that he has it in his blood, that it's been there for generations. He knows exactly what to do, how to do it, where to get money, and how to spend money. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. John? Um, Robertson's strategy stresses gathering delegates in caucus states rather uh, than going for a popular vote so much right now. Uh, he's delegate hunting, and he's counting on a strong showing among Southerners in the regional primary that's going to be coming up uh, next year in 1988 on March the 8th. That at that precinct level, those persons who know as little as possible about the political system or what might be the right uh, course of action that the United States should take in the upcoming years, those are the persons who are going to be making the decisions while all of you good people who are atheists and who have all kind of degrees just sit at home on your you-know-what. I'd like to welcome you to our program, Liberation. My name is Paul Randall. I'm the chairman of the Black Citizens Task Force uh, Police Brutality Committee. And tonight, we hope to share with you some of the uh, experiences by uh, these two guests tonight uh, with the uh, police department. And we hope to enlighten you and to uh, increase your awareness or consciousness about the problems that uh, uh, exist in our community and would hope that you would participate uh, in helping us to uh, uh, resolve this issue. Um, uh, Mr. Shelby, uh, I understand that uh, you had um, an experience uh, with the uh, Austin Police Department and if you would um, share that. Uh, with our viewing audience. Sure. I had quite an experience with the Austin Police Department. <coughs> uh, one afternoon I was riding my pickup and I got pulled over on a warrant. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty good story about that warrant. I didn't know they had filed it because when I got the head, when I received the ticket, mm -hmm. I went down to the police station trying to look for it and they had lost it. At least that's what they told me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. took me over to the counter, over to the desk, booking desk, <coughs> and they proceeded to take my wallet out of my pocket, and I reached up to take a, uh, the ticket that I had in my pocket out and put it on the desk, and that's when this black officer uh, grabbed me in a chokehold and started choking me, and the other officer that was behind the desk grabbed my hands, and three or four more of them grabbed me. Hmm. So, didn't struggle with them because that had been pretty... It's been pretty stupid to struggle with them up there in their own place. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the bad thing about it. After uh, I was up there and they had brutalized me, choked me, and threw me into a sol solitary cell, they had told my parents that uh, my mother and my sister and her husband came down to pay the fine. Mm -hmm. And I refused for them to pay them. I told them I'll give them the money back because I'm going to stay here until I see the judge. Mm -hmm. And uh, that it was a Spanish officer. He was, he was an officer. He was a jailer. And if I could remember who he is, I would like to, uh, well, put some charges on him. Because mm -hmm. he was one of the main instigators. And he mm -hmm. tried to, uh, came in about 2 o'clock over my cell up telling me, well, you can go home. I said, now, what do I want to go home for? Y'all don't choke me. Threw me in here for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be up here in the first place. Mm -hmm. You want me to leave and go? I said, no, I'm staying right here until the morning comes and I can see the judge. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to 
get something straight. You can't take a citizen off the street for no reason and bring them up here and brutalize them like this. Voy a escribir en el pizarrón una de las letras y voy a repasar en breve los sonidos. Es, por ejemplo, la letra B, como decir boy, b, b, boy, la letra B. Color Sound. Teaching America to read through music videos. Hi, this is James Taylor of Fool the Gang. And here's our latest video, Victory. We're looking for green E and pink F sounds. Hello, good morning. I'm Candace Grigsby, and welcome to Stretch and Shine. And if you have someone there at home with you to share these exercises with, so much the better. If not, share them with us, right wherever you are. It's that time again. Put that coffee cup down and join in the fun with Brenda in her upbeat workout for the young at heart. Aerobics with Brenda. And what a ride, Dave. Yeah, that's pretty fun, right? Hey, I really enjoyed that. I tell you what, there's not too many things I enjoy more than horseback riding, except maybe music. Yeah, music. Seeing our friends on Austin Access there, Channel yeah. 10. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Hank Sinatra Presents, right here on Channel 10, Austin, Texas. Tonight, we're having a ball. I'm playing music for Jubal Clark. Yeah. I, don't... Yeah. I don't know where Jubal Clark is, but we're all here, including Betty Jo Bunger right here. Hi, Betty Jo. Everybody say hi to Betty Jo right here. Okay. Back home, my old pal Jake came round, said, was hoping you'd be found. Another man done wrong to get back home. I tried, Lord, I tried, I to make it on the outside. But no one wants to hear this old man's song. I cried, Lord, I cried, I cried on the outside. But there was nowhere to go, no road to turn. 